and amen. Good morning, everyone. Parang tulog pa. Good morning. Amen. It's good to be back in God's house. It's a blessed time. It's better to be in God's house and the thousands elsewhere. Amen. Amen and amen. And for me, it's also good to be back. Why? Because last week, I was in Mindanao. We had uh, another youth-empowered event there at Malungon near Jensan. And once again, God had done miraculous things and God had empowered all the youth of Mindanao. Can we just give God our very best clap offering for that? And not only that, you know what? I had the privilege to meet a person, to meet our future senator, and that is Manny Pacquiao. Amen? So it's a great privilege. It's a, it's a favor from the Lord to meet him, and I'm truly honored to see him there. And you know what? This, part, this picture is not part of the message. So ko lang po kayong ingitin. <laughs> and today, but today, are you excited to hear God's word? Are you excited to hear God's word? Amen. So if you're excited to hear God's word, pwede ba natin once again give God our very best clap offering. Amen. Hallelujah. So in our lives, as we commute, as we drive our cars, how do you feel if someone overtakes you? Have you been overtaken for those who have cars, right? Oh, for those who are commuting, uh, a bus suddenly cuts you, suddenly overtakes at you. And how do you feel? What do you feel if someone overtakes you? And you know what? Here in the Philippines, of course, we use our blinkers for us to turn to the left. and for us to turn to the right. So we blink it towards the left so that the car behind us will know that we're going to pass through to the left. And the same goes for the right signal, that we may go through the right signal, through the right, the right corner. And that happens in the U.S. I, I was able to experience driving in the U.S., and when I signal to the left, the car behind me will slow down so that I could pass through. But not here in the Philippines, Right? You know what, here in the Philippines, if you signal to the left, what will the car behind you do? It will overtake you. It will not let you pass through. That's why when I'm here in the Philippines, driving here in the Philippines, what do I do? I signal to the left so that I'm letting him know that I'm letting him pass through. Overtake, overtake, and so that I could pass through the man. So only in the Philippines, right? So when that happens, when someone overtakes us, It makes us feel bad. It displeases us. We don't like that moment when a car overtakes us. But in life, there are so many things that overtakes us in life. And what should we do? It says in Psalm 40, verse 16, it says here, Let all those who seek you, seek the Lord, rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. The Lord be be magnified. Could we bow down our heads and let us pray? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. See, Lord Jesus Christ, we invite your presence to be in this place. Lord Jesus Christ, you don't want to do this by might, nor by power, but only by your spirit. Lord, today, we ask for your anointing, we ask for your wisdom, and we ask for your favor in this place. Lord God, let us, let us not be magnified here, Lord God, but only you, Lord Jesus, be magnified in our church and in our lives. Today, Lord, we claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Let's give God our very best clap offering. So today, God says, let all those who look at the Lord rejoice and be glad. So today, are you under trials? Are you under struggles? Are you under challenges? And you know what? Today, what we're going to talk about today is how do we rejoice when trials overtake us? Pwede mo bang sikuhin yung katabi mo ngayon? Sabihin mo, ganda ng message today. Kaya huwag ka matutulog, kapatid. Amen? Huwag tayo matutulog because God's message is really for us today. And when we, when we are overtaken by trials, when we're under so great problems in our lives, God is telling us, what should you do? You just shout out, the Lord be magnified. Amen? Pwede ba natin yan sigaw in three? One, two, three. The Lord be Amen? The Lord be magnified. But what does it mean to magnify the Lord? What does magnify mean? When we look at our dictionary, it's a very basic explanation. 
the meaning of magnify is to enlarge, right? To enlarge. So for something small, just like a postal ID, you use a magnifying glass so that it may be magnified, it may grow large. But you know what? Nowadays, you don't usually... May gumagamit pa ba ng magnifying glass? It's not, it's not anymore used most often here. It's a technological world. It's a definite story. You know what? The millennials. This is how the millennials text their parents, right? You text your parents. You text your friends. This is how their iPhones look like. Do you have your iPhone, smartphone, Samsung, or whatever kind of smartphone? This is how the youth text their friends and their neighborhood. But not the same story with our parents. You know what? This is how the iPhones of our parents look like. Nakaka-relate ba kayo You know what? My dad's phone, it looks like this. His font is very large. Nakaset yan sa iPhone yan. It's very large font. Why? Because he's growing older. Okay, maingay. Sinabi ko yun. He's growing older and he needs, he needs to magnify his cell phone so that he may text properly. And you know what? But you know what? In, in the Bible, when the Lord says, the Lord be magnified, it's not just enlarging something small. Why? Because in Hebrew, it says to become greater. Why? The Lord is already great. Amen? The Lord is already big. He's already powerful. He's already awesome. And when we go in our lives, as we move forward in our lives, what do we want to happen? We want to make Him even greater. Why? Because the purpose of our life is to, mag to magnify Jesus. The purpose of my life, the purpose of your life is to magnify Jesus. Amen? But, it says in His Word, but I am poor and needy. But today, I am poor and needy. Trials have overtaken me. Trials have overtaken my life. And when trials overtake us, what happens? We magnify our problems. We magnify our trials. Instead of God being magnified in our lives, what happens? It's our problems that gets magnified. And it says in the next verse, it says, Yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. And when we're under trials, when we're overtaken by trials, how we want, how we desire, Lord, get me out from this as soon as possible. But sometimes there are so many delays, just like in the airport. Have you experienced delays in the airport? You know what? From April to May, I've been riding the airplane every other week going to Luzon besides Mindanao because of our youth empowered events. And you know what? In every trip, my flight is always delayed ng one hour. Well, and when we, when we feel delays, and it also had a brownout at Jensen when I was going home. Wow, terrible, right? We experience delays. And we don't like that in our government, in our uh, airport. We don't want delays. And sometimes delays also happen in our lives. Sometimes you don't know why God is not answering us. There's so much delays and we don't like that in our lives. And when that happens, we get to magnify our trials, our problems. So how does trials overtake our lives? What does trials do in our lives? And it says in this word, For innumerable evils have surrounded me. Are you experiencing that right now? Are evils surrounding you right now? So many temptation, evil people, corrupt people are surrounding us and it's very tempting to do what, are, what they are doing because they have surrounded us. And not only that, my iniquities have overtaken me. My sinfulness my trials, my kakulangan in life, my, my incompleteness have overtaken me. I have no power anymore so that I am not able to look up. Because of trials in our lives, we could not stand up anymore. We could not look to the people anymore. We could not look up anymore. Why? Because there's no more hope. We are full of trials, overtaken by trials. And you know what? They are more than the hairs of my head. Have you experienced that today? Are your trials more than the hairs of your head? Are you experiencing that right now? That's really a hard time, a very tough time. And the writer of this psalm says, because of that, my, my heart fails me. I would just want to give up. I just want to surrender this battle because my trials have overtaken me. 
So is this script true? Is this verse true? You know what? It's true. Why? Because it happened in the life of David. Who knows David? Of course, we know David is the second king of Israel. You know what? This is the, this is the trials of David. And number one, the trial of David, why? Because Saul, King Saul, his king wanted him dead. King Saul ordered his men to kill David. And you know what? Speaking of a king, we also have a new king, new president in our country. At ang tanong ko sa inyo, nanalo po ba ang binoto nyo? Woo! And you know what? So Mindanao, tinanong ko rin tong tanong na to. And everybody was shouting talagang buong Mindanao para kay Duterte. And he, he talagang panalo siya sa Mindanao. And you know what? Sa kay Duterte, he promised, right, to, to kill those who are in corruption, who are, who are in crime, who are doing drugs. If hindi ka masabihin once, twice, thrice, uh, you're gone. Diba? So wala nang ano talaga dito. No more crime. In the Philippines, well, it's a good thing. But you know what? For David's life, King Saul wanted him dead. But King David, but David, he's not yet a king at that time, when David did nothing wrong. He's not corrupt. He's, he didn't do any crimes. He did not do drugs. David was clean. He has done nothing wrong. But his king, his president wanted him dead. So how would David feel? Oh Lord, what, what, why is this thing happening to me? So what did he do? He hid himself in a cave. Why? Because he need to go out. His king wanted him dead. He went into the cave. You know what? David was one of the greatest warriors of their time. One of the greatest soldiers of their time. And he lived in the palace. But when his king wanted him dead, he went to a cave. How do, why, do, why does he deserve to go into a smelly, dark, and dangerous cave? Why does David deserve this? Why? Because 3,000 men wants him dead. He wants, he is hunted by 3,000 men. Kayo ba ay nahunt na ng 3,000 men? May, ganun ka ba ka special for 3,000 men to hunt you? Right? But David, 3,000 men. So how could you hide from 3,000 men? Right? So this is the trials of David, he was overtaken by trials. And what was his cry to the Lord in verse 13 to 15? It says, Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. Lord, I'm, in, I'm overtaken by trials. I'm going through tough times. Lord, Lord, where are you? Get me out from here. O Lord, make haste to help me. That's how desperate David is. Lord, what are you doing? Are you still sleeping? Are you still eating, Lord? Get me out from this mess, Lord. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who seek to destroy my life. Let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor who wish, who wish me evil. Let them be confounded because of their shame who say to me, Aha, aha. Yun, aha, aha, I like it. Hindi na. Aha, aha. Buti nga sayo. You're dead. Tama lang sa'yo yan. Because people of evil purpose wants them dead, wants David dead. And if we are in the position of David, what would we do? If we, we are in his position, what would we feel? Why? Because when trials overtake you, it blurs life. It just blurs life. Just like my picture with Manny Pacquiao, what if the cameraman... The cameraman of the one who took with me is uh, Manny Pacquiao. It's a blurred shot. What would I feel? You know what? It, it was a one shot, one time, big time thing. Why? Because the son of Manny Pacquiao was sick, a two year old son. And I was just given the favor to visit him. What I did there when I entered the hospital, the end, hospital room, I shake Manny's, Manny Pacquiao's hand and Jinky's hand and congratulated them. And just one picture from my cameraman, just one shot. And then thank you, and then I went out. That's how fast it was, meeting Manny Pacquiao. And what if my cameraman did this, a blurred shot, right? It would drive me mad. I might kill my cameraman, right? <laughs> I might kill my cameraman. Why? Because it's a one-time deal. It may not happen again. And you know what? When trials overtake us in our lives, it blurs life. Instead of magnifying God in our lives, what happens? We get confused, we get disoriented, we do foolish things. 
And then we magnify our trials. We magnify our problems in life. So what did, what did David say after that in verse 11? Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. Now it's all about David already. Lord, help me. Get me out from here. And you know, when I was in Mindanao, I met my colleague there whose name is Pastor Vandolf Zarasate. He's my colleague. He's my same batch with the Life Ambassador. We, we are in charge of planting churches. And you know what? Pastor Vandolf Zarasate, this is his church. His church in, is in Church of God Park Inn by Radisson. He's the first from the batch who planted a church in a hotel. So we're not alone. It's not only Marriott Manila. It's also Park Inn in Davao. So when you happen to visit Davao, he's in Park Inn, at, just at the back of SM Lanang. So very strategic position. So I understand Vandolf in leading a church. You know what? As, as we lead a church, as we head a church, you know what? Our cry should be really for the church. Lord, help our church. Lord, um, bless more people, save more people. Our, our cry should be, Lord, save this city. Lord God, I pray for blessings upon the city. But when I was talking to Vandov uh, last, last Thursday, his cry was already different. He was, he was telling me, Lord, ang hirap magpastor. Lord, it's so hard. Lord, why is my congregation not growing? Lord, why is it so hard to preach every Sunday? Lord, Lord, I want to give up. I want to surrender. Lord, I don't like anymore. You see, you see the difference? Right now, he's already magnifying his own trials, his own problems, instead of magnifying God in his church. And right now, I'm also experiencing the same thing. We're just the same, the same situation. And that's, that's, what, that's what happens to us when life gets blurred. We tend to magnify our own selves. We tend to magnify our own problems. So when we are overtaken by trials, what should we do? What is God leading us to do? So in verse 9 to 10, it says, I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips, O Lord. You yourself know. I have not, he I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. So what's expected from us? is to fulfill our purpose, to magnify Jesus in our lives. And this is the checklist to magnify Jesus. Do you want to know the checklist on how to magnify Jesus? You may want to know the checklist. So the number one thing that we need to do to magnify Jesus is for us to show God's glory. So in whatever, whatever, whatever we're doing in our lives, let's give our excellence Let's give our all in all. Let's do great. Let's work hard. Let's study hard so that the people may see God's glory in us. Why if we're just going to sit down, if we're not going to do anything, just going to be an average, the people won't see God's glory. And when the people already sees God's glory, what should we do? Be bold to declare it. Be bold to declare God's glory because they're going to see it. Wow, you're doing great. Wow, you look handsome today. Wow, you look beautiful today. Wow, your, your ministry is doing great. But us Christians, to God be the glory. Glory to God. Why? Because we're shy. Ano daw? Glory to God. Si Lord, si Lord. Why? We're shy being a Christian. We're shy to let them know that it's all because of God's glory. But you know what? When, when people greet you, shout it out aloud, be bold. It's all because of God's glory. Amen? Amen. So number, number three is give back to God the glory. Because some of us do, does it, yes, glory to God, glory to God, praise God. But when we're alone already, no, it's me. I'm handsome. Eh? It's, if not because of me, there's nothing. There's not going to be a church here. If not because of me, no, it's not going to happen. Diba? Sometimes it happens, right? We say it's me. But when we're just alone with God, still give back all the glory to Him. Just give back all the glory to Him. And you know what? David perfected this checklist when he defeated Goliath. You know the story? David and Goliath? Right? David defeated Goliath. 
He was excellent. He worked hard. He studied hard for it. He gave his best and David and Goliath became dead. Why? Because David was strong. God was with him. And you know what? The whole people, the whole land praised David. They saw, but David give, gave back all the glory to God. They, he said to the people, it's all because of God. Glory to God. And he didn't take any fame from the people. He went back to the ground. He knelt down and praised the Lord and gave God all the glory. David perfected the checklist on magnifying Jesus. But what happened to him? When he defeated Goliath, you know what? He, he, experienced, he experienced to be overtaken by trials. The reason why Saul wanted him dead, because he envied David. Because David was getting stronger. David was being more famous. And Saul, he si Saul kay, kay David. That's why he wanted him dead. So when I'm David, Lord, I've given my best. I've magnified you, Lord. But why is it like this? Why is it that I'm still overtaken by trials? I gave my all, Lord. I followed you. I did it, Lord. But why do I still get overtaken by trials in life? And it says in his word, in verse 6, Sacrifices and offering you did not desire. God does not look at our output. God does not look at our sacrifices, not on our efforts. My ears you have opened, burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. God is not looking at those things pala. But you know what? Trials will surely overtake your life, right? You do good, trials will overtake you. You do bad, trials will still overtake you. Crazy, right? trials are inevitable. It will happen. You do good, you give your best. Trials will be there. You do bad, you become evil. Trials will still be there, Lord. Why is that? And when we're under our trials, your works will not save you. No matter what you do, no matter what effort you do, your works will not save you out from this mess. And what do we need to do? Just obey and God will rescue you. Just obey. And God will be the one to rescue you. So what does God want? If it's not our sacrifices, it's not our effort, what does God want? Just in this verse, in verse 5, Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which, which you have done. This is who our God is. He is wonderful. He is beautiful. You know what? And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. God is gracious. God has provided everything from us for us. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. This is who our God is. He's wonderful. He's beautiful. He's great. He's awesome. And what does, what does He just want? He just wants you to magnify Him. Just complete the checklist. Just magnify Him in what you're doing in life today. Just magnify Him. Why? Because you are in the trial to magnify Jesus. You're in the trial to magnify Jesus. That's all. That's why you, you if you're asking, Lord, why are there trials? Why I'm rich, I have trials, I'm poor, I'm in trials, I do good, I'm in trials, I'm doing bad, I'm in trials. But you know what? You're in trials to fulfill your purpose, to magnify Jesus. But us, being humans, how we want to get out from the trial as soon as possible. We want to get out from it. But if we back down, if we surrender, if we get out, we miss to fulfill our purpose, to magnify Jesus. So what should I do, Lord? My works will not save me. So when I'm in trials, what do I do? It's hard, Lord. It's difficult, Lord. What should I do? So this is what David did when trials overtook him. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. 
when you're overtaken by trials. David says, just, just wait. Wait patiently for the Lord. Because trials will always be there. And you just need to go through it. You just need to go through the storm. You just need to go through it and wait. Why? Because when you wait, God will be there to rescue you. And how will He rescue you? It says in His word, He also brought me out of that horrible pit. Are you in that horrible pit today? Are you in that terrible pit today? Are you in that smelly, old, dangerous cave today? Where you have no more options, you have no more way out. You're in that difficult position, but God could get you out from that horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my footsteps. Why? Because when we're in that horrible pit where we're overtaken by great trials, it's very hard to stand up. It's very hard to establish our feet. It's very hard to look up once again, but when we wait upon the Lord, He's going to establish our footsteps. And what will happen again to us? He has put a new song in my mouth. Once again, we could go into church. Once again, praise and worship our God, saying praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the name of the Lord. That's why... You may try it. You may try to do your own works to get out of your trials. But you know what? When trials overtake you, wait. For God will rescue you. Do you want God's rescue today? We want God's rescue. I want to receive God's rescue because that's the only answer to all my trials in life. And you know what? David, let's go back to the story of David. David had his ups and downs in his life. Ups and downs. He was at an up when he defeated Goliath. It was a glorious day. But you know what? He was also overtaken by trials and he went down. And Saul, King Saul wanted him dead. But you know what? Because of God's goodness, he just waited. He was able to get out from that trial and he went up again. And he became the king of Israel. Wow, what a great moment in his life. But you know what? He was once again overtaken by trials. And what happened to him? He went down. Why? Because he committed adultery with Bathsheba. You know Bathsheba, right? Bathsheba was a beautiful woman. David was struck by Bathsheba. And David wanted her so badly, so he committed adultery with Bathsheba. And it, it, he was under trial, he was under testings, and it was, oh, life was a blur. He wants to hide his own trial. He wants to hide his own shame. That's why what did he do? Bathsheba had a husband. So what did he do? He ordered his people to send Uriah, the husband, into the front line of the army. Para hindi mabisto si David. Para okay lang yung kanyang ginawa. Send Uriah in the front of the army. And what happened? Uriah died. The husband of Bathsheba died. So this is what David did in verse 9. When God was already talking to him through prophet Nathan, he says, Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and you have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. How cruel you are, David. What have you done? It's alright to, to be overtaken by trials because we're doing good. The devil wants us dead. The devil wants to destroy us. But here, David, he was not doing good. He was doing something evil and he was overtaken by his own evilness. And for us Christians, tapat lang yan sa'yo. It's just right for David to experience this. God was commanding him to be dead through to the prophet Nathan. But what happened to him? 
a man deserving of death, a man who did cruelty. He was overtaken by his own evilness. What happened to him when he realized it? When he received God's word? What did he do? In the next verse it says, So David said to Nathan, to prophet Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan, I'm, I'm wrong. I did something wrong. I, I see it. It's now clear. It's now clear. I sinned against the Lord. And what, does, what was the reply of God? And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Wow. Wow. You shall not die. In the bottom pit, in the horrible pit, I don't know if you have committed adultery already, but if we have committed adultery, how horrible is our experience? How guilty could we have been with that experience? And David was there because of his own foolishness. But when he just went back to God saying, Lord, I could not stand up anymore. My feet are not established. I could not look up. Wala akong mukhang iaharap sa'yo, Panginoon. But Lord, today I just accept I have sinned. And I just wait for your reply on what you will do with my life. And God said, I have put away your sin. You shall not die today. I have forgiven you. I have rescued you out from that horrible pit. Why? What is the content of David's heart at that moment? This is his delight. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. When trials, when you're under trial, when you're overtaken by trial, and your delight is to magnify Jesus, you have God's rescue for your life. If that's your desire, in good season, in bad season, I'm up, I'm down, problems are high, no problems today. But if our delight is to magnify Jesus, wherever you are right now, you have God's rescue. That's why it says in His Word that all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Why, why will I be glad in my trials? Why will I rejoice in my trials? Let such as love, salvation, seek it really. The Lord be magnified. Why do we rejoice? Why? Because rescue is coming in your life today. Amen? Rescue is coming in our life today. Let me just shout it out. The Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified. And that's God's message for us today. Magnify Jesus. Wherever you are right now, magnify Jesus. You're doing good. Magnify Jesus. You did something bad. Being human. Just human, you fall. David fell. He's a man after God's own heart, but he fell. But when he fell, he realized it. He said, sorry. He magnified Jesus. That's, mess that's the message of God today. And you know what? God understands it, that life is full of trials. You're a pastor. You're a Sunday schooler. You're studying. You're working. You're in the business. Whatever case... We are full of trials. And true enough, we need God's rescue in our lives. And you know what? How do we magnify Jesus? We just wait. Because when God, we allow God to rescue us out from our trials, that's the point where His name shall surely be magnified in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, have trials overtaken you? Are you under it right now? Are you in a horrible pit right now? Are you having a hard time to stand up right now? You're overtaken by trials. If you're overtaken by trials, and you're saying, Lord, I need your rescue. Lord, 
I need your rescue. Why? Because I don't want my works to save me. I don't want my name to be glorified. In my trials, I ask for your rescue so that you may be magnified in my life forever. So if that's you saying, Lord, please rescue me. I invite you to come to the altar and we will wait for the Lord and receive His rescue for our lives. So as the worship team sings this song, you're free to come to Jesus and receive your rescue from the Lord. open
our hands to God. It's an act of surrender, saying, I need you, Jesus. And could you join me in this prayer? Lord Jesus Christ, I'm under trials. I'm overtaken by trials. And Lord God, my works will not save me. That's why I tell you right now, Lord, I need you, Jesus. I need your rescue. I need your rescue. I want your rescue. I want your rescue for my life today. For my life today. I've done foolish things. I've done foolish things. I've done evil things. I've done evil things. I've also done great things, Lord. I've also done great things, Lord. But today I realize. But today I realize. I am gonna still be. I'm gonna still be overtaken. Overtaken me by trials. By trials. And Lord. And Lord, only you, only you can save me. Can save me. And Lord, and Lord, as I receive your rescue, as I receive your rescue, I decide, I decide to magnify you. To magnify you in my life, in my life, in my family, in my family, in my church, in my church, in my city, in my city, and in my country. And in my country. We just give God our very best clap offer. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, here are your people. Our God, we're, we're just humans. Our God, we don't know everything. Our God, we don't know what's happening in our lives. We don't have the right perspective. Our God, we're doing good, Lord God, but still doing, Lord God, having trials, Lord God. We've done bad in the past, Lord God, and still experience trials. Our God, but they this church comes to you. And Lord God, we will not magnify our lives. We will not magnify our names. We will not magnify our trials and problems anymore, Lord. It's only you, Lord Jesus Christ, that we will magnify in our lives forever. Today, could we raise up our tithes and offering? Let's lift them high. This is an act of worship. It's all for the glory of our God. Join me in this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this tithes and offering. Sometimes, Lord, we could not give our tithes and offering. Lord God, because we magnify our trials. We magnify that we have insufficient wealth. Lord God, we magnify that we have no blessings this week. Lord God, we magnify that our family needs wealth. Lord. And sorry for that, Lord. For in this life, Lord God, we continually, Lord God, miss our purpose in life. And that's only to magnify you, Jesus. And Lord God, as we lift up our tithes and offering to you, this is an act of surrender. This is an act of commitment that we will magnify you even with our wealth. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, as we depart from this place, Lord God, thank you for your people. Thank you for your congregation, Lord God. Thank you for your wonderful message for each and every one of us. And Lord God, give us the strength. Give us the courage, Lord God, not to focus anymore on our own problems, not to magnify anymore our own trials, Lord. But Lord, lead us, Lord God, to magnify you, Lord Jesus Christ, in our lives from this day forward. Hallelujah, God Almighty. Hallelujah, Lord. And today, Lord God, we claim the victory. Take good care of us, Lord God, for the rest of this week. And we give you back all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everybody shout, Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Have a blessed week.